inside Feeling sometimes blind me Some dreams to fall behind me I don't have to run Don't have to hide And it's two thousand miles to Virginia sings and everybody plays and this is Tanglefoot and seven musicians and everybody writes I should also say that everybody here is virtually everybody here is a songwriter is there one among you who is not a songwriter <laughs> only <laughs> only me. he uh, this is Steve Stapenhorst who is the bass player he also from times to times picks up the clarinet which is not a bluegrass instrument but that gives me the opportunity to say that that Tanglefoot does all kinds of music rock and folk and country and contemporary and True. jazz and just about Touch everything. Jazz, yes. And uh, how long has, has this band been together with everybody here? Everybody has been together for about two and a half years. And some of you have been here longer than as others. As long as five years, right. Nobody's ever left, but we've built the band in five years. Steve, now you're playing a bass. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, when I was a youth uh, and used to see the bands play when I was a little kid, they didn't have such a thing as that. They had something like this. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, it's not sacrilege to go electric, is it? It's, uh, it is to only a few people anymore. The, uh, the electric bass has become very popular because it's fretted and much easier to play accurately. And also the volume, as sound has picked up and uh, PA systems have become sophisticated, a stand-up bass is very difficult to, uh, to, to get out loud enough to compete with the rest of the instruments. An electric bass is more controllable. You're out at the Berea Fairgrounds at the Cuyahoga County Fair all the right. rest this week through Sunday and playing all kinds of music, but we're talking about bluegrass specifically this morning. Uh, how would you define what bluegrass is? It's, uh, 
whatever Bill Monroe started. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Monroe, and then he had, had a fight with Charlie. And right. Charlie continued on, and then it kept growing and developing and getting more and more sophisticated. I think that the, the, uh, the uh, only way to describe it is that it's typified by acoustic banjo, mandolin, fiddle, and guitar, and various other instruments, but uh, uh, it's sort of hard to uh, define it other than that. It had its roots in the British Isles and then in uh, the Appalachians in America. And it got isolated there and uh, just sort of uh, became a thing unto itself and, right. and, and developed. Exactly, and now it's, now it's evolved back with some other styles, mm -hmm. so it's all mixed in together. Well, we have a, a marvelous fiddle that's being played by your sister there, Ellen Stavenhorst. And uh, Ellen, tell us a little about, bit about that instrument. Is that, uh, is that just a regular violin that you yeah. would find uh, on the stage at Severance Hall? It is. It's the same instrument. The main difference is uh, in bowing style and also in fiddling, you, you play a lot of chords. And uh, that's really the main difference. Did you study that instrument as uh, a Suzuki might teach it to you or as a Not classical the, uh, yes, player I, would tell you? I played it in an orchestra in junior high. And did you, did you find that, uh, that the two uh, approaches, what you're doing uh, with the band here, is uh, quite compatible with uh, sure. a yeah. classical approach? Yeah. Music is music, after all. There yeah. are notes that have to be in sequence and they have to match with what he's doing over there, huh? Yeah. A lot of the difference is playing by ear in this kind of music and instead of, as opposed to reading. And there's a lot of improvisation? Yeah, yeah, at least initially when we're working up a song. And uh, let's move on down and we will uh, see some of the other instruments. I want to look at the mandolin over there and uh, Jim Yoder is playing the mandolin. Uh, where did, that, that sounds Italianate. Did yeah, you suppose I, it came originally from uh, <coughs> Latin countries? Probably did, from the lute or the mandola, something like that. And show us how it's, uh, it's fretted. It's kind of, uh, kind of unique. It's really only, it's eight strings that do four things, right? Right. There are, these two strings are the same, and these two are the same, mm -hmm. these two, and these two. And so. uh, wonder why, do the, is, that, is that just redundancy in case one breaks, or uh, does it <laughs> make a, a nice sound? It's a very small instrument. Uh -huh. It has to ring out. Yeah. I have to compete. Hey, I guess Randy. Oh, yeah. You lose most uh -huh. of that. Uh, mm -hmm. Whack the string. Yeah. Well, uh, who is your hero? I don't really have a hero, although I think I listened to Jethro Burns growing up, and he plays more like jazz mandolin. I think that's probably where I first heard mandolin. And uh, would you say that your background with this band is more in, in, in jazz than with some of the other styles? No. No? No, <laughs> not quite jazz, but I really enjoy, I enjoy a lot of jazz. Well, if there is, I would say that if there is a, well, a classical instrument of bluegrass, it almost has to be the one over there that Randy is holding, wouldn't you think? These two instruments probably characterize the flavor and taste of, of bluegrass. Tell us about the five-string. How old is that instrument? Um, the five-string, I'm not sure. This is Randy I, Noy, by the way. Hi. I'd say, I would say it's about 30 or 40 years old. The initial banjo was a four-string banjo. If you've ever gone to a Shakey's Pizza par or Parlor, you've seen the ragtime banjo. Yeah, they you just, know, they strum the chords. And you know. A guy by the name of Earl Scruggs came along, and, and uh, he put a... Uh, I don't know if he was the actual, actual guy who put it on, but someone put a top string on called a drone string. Mm -hmm. a, you, just, you don't fret it. It's the same, uh, mm -hmm. same tone throughout. Mm -hmm. And then he developed finger picking instead of just strumming. And so that's where the bluegrass style came from. Basically. Okay, let's uh, find out a little bit about the next song we're going to do. And this man is from Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, Jeff, uh, tell us about this song we're going to play. You're from, you grew up in Rocky River. Rocky River. And then you uh, got with this band out in Colorado and have been with it for some little time now. Uh, what's the song that you're going to do uh, to close us here today? This is a song I wrote about two years ago. And in, <coughs> it's called We Will Fly. And in normal performance, uh, it would come off as like a contemporary folk orchestral rock song. Mm -hmm. Today, <laughs> how's that one? Today we're going to do it minus, minus synthesizer, minus drums, and a few other instruments which add beef to it. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it for you acoustically today. Okay, Jeff Getz, and we should also say Pat Curto is here and Jerry Durstein. They are the other two members that we didn't have a chance to talk to. And we're going to hear uh, one of the songs uh, that will be among the scores of songs that they'll be performing all the rest of this week, twice every evening, out at the uh, grandstand at the Berea Fairgrounds during the Cuyahoga County Fair. And thank you all for getting up so early, coming down and rehearsing <laughs> and getting this organized. Thank you. And let's hear Jeff's song. All right. Fine. First snow hit the peaks August 11 Two days before I'd risen to heaven I'd flown away on the wings of an angel 
You touched me and it's here to stay Just as fast you've gone away I had fallen in love Near as I could tell And we will fly In the hopes of another day That is why The dreams that I'm saving Are the things that I'm craving I want to give a all to you My heart's been lifted by the song of a robin Reminding me of things long forgotten I once again feel like a child Your soft caress and tender care I'm wondering if you're really there Or is it that I'm going wild Different flavors? Yeah. Looks good. Thank you so much. You know, there's nothing like a county fair to get such good things like cotton candy. And we're here at the Berea County Fairgrounds for the Cuyahoga County Fair, which is going on through Sunday. And this is a special afternoon exchange for you today. As a matter of fact, we have lots of things planned uh, along with this cotton candy. Uh, we're going to take you to a demolition derby. We are subtitling it Bob James uh, School of Driving. We'll be going there. We're going to go to a, few, a food judging contest where some uh, baked goods are being judged. As a matter of fact, I think maybe I'll enter something. And then we'll see what happens there. Uh, four H'ers will meet them and their animals. We'll go to a rooster crowing contest, believe it or not. We'll meet some skydivers, a group of women who uh, jump for fun. Plus, we have some bluegrass music for you from Tanglefoot. And they're at the gazebo right now where Fred is. And why don't we go there? She'll now engulf and devour that cotton candy. I just make sure the mustard is clear of my face from one of the footlong hot dogs I just had. These people, the seven of them behind us here, are collectively Tanglefoot. And this is Steve Stabenhorst, and it's been a year since we talked, Steve. Welcome back. Thank you very much. The band comes from where? Aspen, Colorado. But we also have in the band one of uh, Cleveland's own. We do. We have Jeff Getz from Rocky River. There he is. Thank you. Let's hear it for somebody local here. Uh, I wonder, uh, Steve, if you could describe what you're doing these days, what kind of music. Last time you were here, we talked, we talked uh, bluegrass. We do bluegrass You play music. bluegrass. Right. We played that uh, in your studio last time, and we do a lot of kinds of music. We did a lot of kinds of music then. We do rock, and we do folk, and folk rock, and gospel, and bluegrass, a little of everything. And today what we're doing is a mixture of gospel, rock, folk, etc. But we do bluegrass in the show, too. Uh, well, now, uh, what essentially is the difference between the kind of sound you're going to be giving us today and, and bluegrass? Is it just... Is it just uh, something eclectic, a little bit of a whole bunch of different things that you like and all of your folks like? Yeah, it is. Uh, today we're not using any bluegrass instruments, really. We don't have a banjo in this song. We don't have a mandolin in the song. We don't have a guitar in the song. We do have drums. We have electric bass, neither of which are usually in bluegrass music. We have uh, trombone, which would be really rare with uh, Bill Monroe's show. I would think so. Yeah. Uh, do all of these people come from all different parts of the country? Very quickly, we'll go around, besides uh, Jeff, who's from Rocky River. We have Randy on the end from Eureka, Illinois, Jim from Fort Wayne, Indiana, Jeff from Rocky River. I'm from Glendale, California. 
Pat's from Eveleth, Minnesota. Jerry, behind you on the piano, is from Harrisonburg, Virginia. And Ellen is my sister and is also from Glendale, California. Well, uh, we want to tell everybody, just before you play for us, that uh, you're here twice every evening at right. 7 and 9 o'clock with right. two shows right here in the gazebo at the Cuyahoga County Fair at the fairgrounds in Berea, Tanglefoot. Right. And what's the song you're going to play for us? This is called Standing on the Rock, and it's a, it's a gospel rock folk song, I guess you'd say. Jerry wrote it. And it's one of our favorite songs. Thank you very much, yeah. Steve, for coming back and letting us uh, visit with you live out here Thanks at the fair. Us, Thank you. Yeah. Tanglefoot.